And that was, I think that was, and then look, I think that was Iger's biggest mistake in a lot of ways. Yes, legally, he paid lip service and said they considered all candidates. Sure. But really, I don't think there was much consideration. I think that he really wanted someone from within to promote and become the next CEO. And I think that was to the detriment of the Walt Disney Company. I, 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 look, there is this, in my opinion, this kind of like this misconception that if you're not like a Disney Company lifer, that you are that you don't understand Disney, that you're not going to understand the brand, you're not going to understand the culture. And I think it's total BS. You look at Michael Eisner, Frank Wells. These these guys did not come from Disney. They were not promoted from within. Michael Eisner came from Paramount. He came in with Frank Wells. He, I think Wells was from like Warner Brothers or something. Yeah. No, these guys did not get promoted from within, and they understood Disney a lot more than 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 the people that were promoted from within. You know, they got it. They understood it. You don't have to be a Disney lifer to get the company, to man the company well. And I think when Bob Iger decided, and I do believe he did decide, that he wanted someone from within the company, that was the biggest downfall. He should have thought more outside the box, consider outside candidates. You just bought 20th Century. You inherited a huge amount of talent buying that studio. He should have looked at Fox, Peter Rice, look at candidates that maybe are even outside of the Hollywood bubble, some tech people, whatever, get really innovative with it. And I'm really surprised at how safe Bob Iger played it with Bob Chapek. It was like the most boring kind of like, it was just a bad decision in, in, on paper. He knew how bad Chapek was seen in the community when he was running the parks. Mm -hmm. Like, why well, would you choose this guy? Well, Let's think about this for, for, for a little bit, right? Because JPEG had successfully maneuvered to consolidate consumer products. Um, previously, also uh, Disney Interactive, which that had been a drag on a company for a long time. So consumer, uh, uh, Disney Interactive merges with consumer products, and then consumer products merges with the Parks and Resorts Division. I mean, he had successfully you know, perform that transition in, in a, at a time when they were, you know, investing huge amounts into the uh, Parks and Resorts Division, right? And that relationship, that marriage right there had benefited the parks greatly, especially when we saw in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in ways that I've outlined before, right? The, this incredible amount of merchandise that we've seen uh, from, from both that. Also, Avatar uh, is also included in that, right? Uh, the, yeah. Pandora also included a lot of uh, a lot of unique merchandising opportunities that wouldn't have been possible without the merger of those two divisions. And so I think when you have those kind of big things happening in a way that really Jay Rasulo or Tom Sags never really did. Yeah, that's true. And have him uh, sort of understand this kind of part of the world of Disney so well, I think I can understand why that would be attractive. You also have to think, too, I, I, I understand the history, right? When you have Frank Wells and Michael Eisner being brought in from the outside. I'll push back a little bit and say that Disney, when Walt died, he didn't have a lot of great generals. He had a lot of great lieutenants. Right. A lot of people who could take orders but not necessarily get them themselves or really steer a path forward in the way that Walt did. Um, so when, when Walt and Roy died, I mean... Uh, you know, a lot of the ambition, a lot of the direction died with them. And obviously we've heard, um, uh, what is it, Steve Jobs talk about this, right? Uh, and Bob Iger talk about it where it's like, when I leave, I don't want to leave this place in a bad position. Like Walt maybe left the company. And so and so they needed outside guys to really help them out. They really need, they needed an outside force to tell them, hey, look, you got a dead guy running your company kind of thing. Yeah. Right. That doesn't come from within. That only comes outside. I think where the company was and and is largely at, but was back in 2020 when this transition happened, the company's way different than where it was in 1981, 1982, and 1983, right? When that happened. And it's so monstrous. It's so big. It involves so much. There's not really an, another entertainment company like it on the planet so for Iger, I think, who understands that dynamic the best, 
probably this guy JPEG right here of the candidates that we have uh, in front of us. Now, my thing is, is <laughs> I mean, I kind of thought that that JPEG was the fall guy, to be honest with you, with how that whole thing happened, right? And we've heard this kind of theory before, yeah, where it's like when this pandy happens and so profound and it affects so much of their business, um, if you screw it up, well, it just falls on JPEG. And they can bring Iron Bag if they want to, they can select somebody else, but he kind of seemed like the hatchet man to me. And, and as this article details out, I mean, some big moves have transpired. Uh, you know, as a result of that profound shift there, but JPEG has been able to navigate this, ex you know, pretty extremely well, all things considering now he hasn't yeah. the, the, the relationships with talent and the, some of the, some of the PR PR moves. Yeah. That that's, that's a whole different story, <laughs> especially now. But when it comes to, I mean, Disney was in a very, I don't think people understand they were in a very precarious situation. Oh Yeah. Because if that stock remains low, that doesn't just affect dividends or payouts or price in the dollar when it comes to the, 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 the stock market or whatever. That makes them susceptible for buyout, right. which is what, which is a big reason. And what happened back in the 80s with you know, Michael Eisner and Frank Wells coming into the company, right? The green right. mailers. If that happens, Disney has changed profoundly in, yeah. in all kinds of ways that that are you know cannot be anticipated, right? So the fact that Chapek was able to maintain stock levels at at the point where where they, where 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 they sat and now sit, I understand the stock thirty percent lower than it was fifty two weeks ago or whatever, but I can't tell you the the job that 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 Chapek had in front of him, the Herculean task and Look, you can argue with some of those decisions, obviously the layoffs, the, the executive bonuses and salaries, you know, but relatively unscathed. And they didn't have to sell off whole divisions of the company just to just True. to keep keep themselves alive. That's credit to JPEG, I think. No, it is. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely correct on that, Dre. And that's why I love I love I love how we dive into this stuff because we are yeah. fair to JPEG. Yeah. And we, we give credit where it's due. And you're absolutely right. The the way Chapek navigated the waters after during the pandy, the stock was down. I remember I'm a stock hey, I, I own Disney stock, full disclosure. I do own not a whole lot of shares, you know, but I, I own I think I, I think I remember telling people, uh bye. <laughs> like a buy, like buy right now, like you buy did. right now because it's, you're never going to see the stock as low as it uh, as it was in, in the rest of our life. No, yeah, and it was down to like like in 2020, it was down to like 80 bucks a share. It was very cheap for Disney, Crazy. and I bought a few more shares around that time period. Mm -hmm. But JPEG really successfully navigated those waters, brought the stock price back up, and like you said, relatively unscathed. Look, Disney depends so much on people congregating and coming together whether it be their cruise lines whether it be their theme parks whether it be their movies everything is about crowds essentially except for yeah. disney plus they yeah. could have taken the biggest hit they could have been they could have so they, they could have been in a position where they so had a sell-off like you said divisions of the company they could have been bought out by someone like apple or some big tech company like amazon or something who knows and they weren't you know, I mean, and that that is kudos to Bob Chapek because look, at the end of the day, if fans want to say the buck stops here with Bob Chapek, well, then the buck stops here with Bob Chapek, and you got to give him credit where it's also, you know, positive. You can't just say the buck stops here when it's bad shit. Yeah. You know. <laughs>